When I graduated from high school in 2017, I decided to follow my passion for video games and pursue a career in game development. Today, eventually, I'm a full-time game developer, and this is my journey of how I learned to make video games. My name is Amr Hamid, and in this video, I'll be sharing with you how did I learn to make video games and some mistakes that I've done along the way, so hopefully, you can do better. Since story-driven games like Dust of Us and Uncharted were the most games that I loved, I started by opening the websites for the developers that made those games. Developers like Naughty Dog, Rockstar Games, Santa Monica Studios, and other developers. And look for the job description for a gameplay programmer role. Those descriptions had four common requirements, which are Passion for video games, pay close in computer science or an equivalent field, writing clean C++ code, and strong 3D mathematical skills. I had only one of those. There were three blank lines after high school to list more education. I didn't need that many lines. So my next step was getting a big course in computer science. So I joined the local university here in Egypt, and I thought back then that by the time that I have graduated, I would have made many games and those studios will be waiting for me. I was so naive. For the first two years, me and my fellow procrastinating mind kept waiting for any course that touches on game development, only to realize that all I'm gonna learn here are the basics of programming and other computer science stuff in general. And there, I learned what variables, functions, control flow stuff are, some object-oriented programming principles, data structures, and algorithms. And C++, luckily, was the main language taught in these courses. But the bad thing about these courses is that there was not enough practical learning. So I had to find my own playground to apply those skills by making a video game. So I found that the first thing that you need to make a video game is to use something called a game engine, or you are too smart to make your own, and I knew I wasn't that smart. I looked up for different free engines to use, and since AAA Studios were my target, I thought that a real engine is suitable for this job. So I downloaded the engine and opened it for the first time, and I was so intimidated. There was a lot of buttons that I didn't know what any of those does, but I kept pressing on that green play button and moving around with the character, and for the first time in my life, I was so happy that I'm learning something that I love and getting closer to my dream goal. So I opened up YouTube and started following some tutorials and kept replicating what the instructor did in those videos. I felt I was learning, but once that video is off, I was off, and I felt that I lost everything that I've learned. The great thing about these videos is that they show you how something is done in a specific way, but they don't show you why they did it that way, or what are the other ways that you can implement that thing depending on your context. At that stage, I needed someone to take my hand and slowly show me the engine. And since I couldn't afford a mentor, I looked up for courses, and I found two great courses that were affordable on Udemy and started taking them. These courses got me what I needed at that time. They showed me different panels of the interface. They showed me the Unreal Engine gameplay framework, what are the common classes that I'm going to be using in most of my projects, and how I went to use them. Then we started implementing some gameplay mechanics, like how do you move a character, or how do you deal damage, or how do you create or destroy actors, and how to load or save a game. By the time that I finished these two courses, I had made about six games, so I had a better understanding about UI programming, gameplay programming, animation programming, AI programming, and I knew how to make a full game from start to finish. Now I needed to put my learning to the test, make more games and build up my portfolio, and gain more confidence in my skills. And that's when I decided to join Game Jams. To this day, all of my finished personal projects are Game Jam participations. My first game jam participation was in GMTK 2022, in which I made an endless runner that instead of collecting coins, you are collecting food. But there are two types of food, healthy and unhealthy, and you must balance what you are collecting. I guess I had some issues with my weight back in that time. It was a stupid idea, but it was a great fit for two days jam, and I ended up with a finished game. The next jam was Epic Mega Jam 2022. I had seven days, and the theme was about time. Back then, I was so inspired by the time travel mechanic from Titanfall 2 and Dishonored, and I asked myself, can I do something similar? And I did. It was a simple trick that you have two maps that share the same layout and you simply teleport the character between those two maps. It did the job and I was so happy, but I did the mistake of underestimating the scope of the project because I had other mechanics that I couldn't finish in time and I couldn't play test it once. I ended up with an unplayable game because players couldn't traverse to the environment due to an issue with collision in my level design. The next jam, I had about three days and I was running out of ideas, but I wanted to have something finished. So I decided to go with the generic zombie shooter.
I did a big mistake of focusing on writing clean code while prototyping, which takes more time, and also it was written C++, which is slow in compilation time compared to blueprints, so I, didn't, I also did the mistake of not playtesting the game because I didn't have enough time, but it was finished. In the next game jam, I made a speedrun platformer where platforms are exploding mines. I did learn from both mistakes and I kept the scope small, but I ended up with another big mistake. I didn't play this to the game with any other person, and I thought it was so fun, but it ended up not to be. And it taught me this important lesson. Like test your games with others because they will not be as fun as you think. In the next jam, I had about three days and I had this idea of a shooter where you earn random abilities every time you beat a wave. It sounded fun for me again and it was built on top of Unreal Engine 5 Liar Sample, but again, I did do two mistakes. The first one was I didn't know how to use Lyra and I was trying to learn it at the same time that I'm using it in a three days jam. And that taught me this important lesson. Never use a sample or a template or a plugin prior to understanding it in the first place. The second mistake that the game again didn't end up as fun as I thought and it taught me that whatever your game development role is, make sure you study game design. After participating in those game jams, my confidence in my game development skills grew up a lot and I had more finished projects. And I learned a very important skill that no course can teach which is how to look for a solution and how to search for a problem because in those games while developing them I had some bugs and errors that showed up that no courses can teach because they are so specific to my context and the only way to solve them is to understand how to read the documentation or how to ask some questions or look for someone who had a similar, pro similar problem through the communities. I was a little bit drifted into the world of Unreal Engine and it was time to go back to the four requirements that I was after the next one for me was clean code. So I read the book that goes by the same name by Robert C. Martin and it taught me about the importance of clean code, how it helps you manage a big project and how it keeps everything organized for your future self and for other team members. And that was requirement two out of four checked. The last two years of college have passed. I have graduated and earned my bachelor's in computer science and that was requirement three out of four also checked. I wanted to continue and learn the last requirement but I had to take responsibility of my financial situation and find a job immediately. Knowing that my portfolio doesn't stand up to the expectations of AAA Studios yet, I had to lower my ambition and find a less demanding job. After two weeks of searching, I was lucky to land my first job as an Unreal Engine developer and I decided to use my free time to learn that last requirement. Only for life to face me with another challenge that will let me lose my job and push me away from game development for one year. I was shot. After three months of doing my day job, the time must join the military for one year. During that year, I will serve as a guard on prison towers, which even made it worse for me. I was so devastated that I will be in this environment and that I will lose one year of my life, learning nothing and losing everything that I've worked on. And that led me to find a solution. I was spending more than 12 hours alone in a tower. It turned out to be a perfect environment for a procrastinator like me no distractions, no social media, and reading a book about game development is much more fun in that environment than talking to yourself for 12 hours. In that year, I finished about 10 books. Three of them were about game development, and I had also consistent vacations, which made me lucky to get back to my job, doing it part time. And before ending that year, I was able to make time and start freelancing on the side, which made that year that I hated so much, one of the most successful years of my life. And it was one of those moments that Allah sends you a gift that if you turn it and use it in your favor, your life will be much better and what you hated can turn out to be one of the best things that ever happened to you. The first book that I read was Game Programming Patterns by Bob Nystrom. I felt that I was so focused on a real engine and wanted to increase my knowledge in game programming and software engineering in general and touch on the topic of design patterns, which I knew nothing about at that time. And that book is a must for every game programmer out there. It taught me different solutions or patterns to apply for common problems that every programmer faced often. For example, most of the games that I have made had very coupled code and that was so hard to modify. Learning about coupling patterns like components, service locators, and event queues was very essential in making those systems more decoupled and easily modified later. I also learned about game loops and how they are written under the hood and how do actors update every frame, which is essential for any game out there. The next book that I read was about game design. Because I didn't know anything about that topic, and all of the games that I've made so far were pretty boring, 
I didn't know why. Not until I read The Art of Game Design by Jesse Chip, which introduced some lenses or questions that the more you ask these questions, the better answers that you have to understand your game, your audience, and yourself, and to make better games. And I remember that I kept yelling in that tower and telling myself, I am a game designer, I am a game designer. You might be asking, did I forget the fourth requirement, which was 3D math? But to be honest, I didn't. I was procrastinating so much because I was afraid of math. Because in high school, math and physics were the two subjects that I had gotten the lowest degrees in. I felt that I was so stupid to learn or understand math, but I didn't know why. All I did understand is that this is very important for game programming. And I remember how many times I was faced with a task like calculating a head direction of where a bullet came from or how to trace for a climbable ledge, for example, but I didn't know how to do that and I ended up sometimes copying other people could without understanding it. I didn't know where to start or what subjects of mathematics are involved in game programming. So after some research, I found a great book called Essential Mathematics for Games and Interactive Applications, but it was a little bit advanced for me at that time. So I found another great one by Fletcher Dunn and Anna Parbury, which is called 3D Math Primer for Graphics and Game Development. The book gradually increases in difficulty, starting with vectors and matrices and different operations in them, which I took already on high school, but at least that time, I knew why do I need them in video games. The book then increased in difficulty, showing what are annotations and how they are represented in a game engine, and touching on some of their common problems like gimbal lock and why do we need criterions or what are criterions in the first place. Then it delved onto more advanced topics like rendering, how a frame is rendered, what is the rendering equation and what are different lighting models like blind fong. Then it touched on some calculus and physics and taught me how collision is detected or responded to, how do we calculate forces and how do we calculate velocities. It was very fun but it was so advanced for me. It took me about 8 months to finish this book and to digest this information and to be honest it wasn't easy at all. But at least now I have a better understanding of how stuff works under the hood and what are the right questions that I should ask when I get to face a mathematical problem and where to find solutions. And at least I have a great reference that I can increase my knowledge even further when I need to. And with that, the fourth and last requirement was completed and the material was over. But is that enough? And what are the mistakes that I've done along my journey? The biggest mistake that I've done is not applying what I have learned. That's why I became proficient with Unreal Engine, because all my practical learning was about making games with Unreal Engine. But for example, I don't consider myself a good game designer, and because that cannot happen by reading a book about game design, or even 10 books, that doesn't happen until you design games and analyze other, other games and understand what makes them good or what makes them bad. And the same goes for programming patterns, you cannot understand the better until you face it and you know when to use it and you write it by your own, and the same goes for mathematics. So make sure that you use both theoretical and practical learning when you are learning something and try to make any program with it and even teach it to someone else. That way you make sure that you retain information and you understand it for a long period. The second mistake, and this one is also a common mistake, and that is not learning the basics. And here I'm talking about the basics of programming, about mathematics, those stuff that whatever engine you are going to use are always going to be the same. To so make sure that you study the basics of programming, C++, mathematics, object-oriented programming, the structure and algorithms, have a good basis in those, and only then you can jump and choose a game engine. The next one is actual tip. And that is, if you can't afford it, find yourself a mentor or join a game dev college. Yes, self-studying is awesome and you get to choose what to study, but at the same time, that can be very tough. Because a lot of the time I remember I was lost along the way and I didn't understand what is the next step or what should I study or even do, am I following the right path. But with a mentor or joining game dev college, the path is clear and they have done all the headache that of all of that headache for you and you just have to study or do the work by yourself next step is prefer specialization but also be a generalist while i was lost a little bit on knowing what to learn and while making video games i got a little bit distracted by taking some courses on blender and i made that famous donut and i also took some courses about zbrush and i made this james bond look alike that looked awesome and also i've read a book about living design and in the military, as you know, I've read a book about game design. 
While you may say this is a little bit of a drift from game programming, but to be honest, studying those concepts and knowing about these topics made my life a lot easier. Because at least now I can communicate with these individuals, or artists, or designers in a better way, and I understand their terminology, and I can ask them or 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 understand what they are referring to when communicating with them. For specialization, it's not enough to say that I want to become a game programmer. You must specialize inside that because game development, or at least AAA studios, require more specialization. Is it gameplay programming, AI programming, UI programming, or animation programming, or something else that you want to specialize in? And the same applies for artists. Do you want to be a character artist, or a rigger, or a, tex a texture artist, or a material artist? There are a lot of types, and you must know your specialization and be good at it for you to, be, to have a chance to get to work at one of those companies. Have an online presence and make connections. While you might have all the skills that are needed, but to be honest, that's not enough and the games industry is so demanding and the competition is so high. So make sure that you have at least two to three connections on LinkedIn. Those are recruiters that will give you a ton of valuable feedback on your portfolio, for example, what are the, the roles that you are looking for and other information. They will be your shortcut to the industry, but make sure that you connect with them in a friendly and polite manner. Apply as you learn, because the learning will never stop. You might think that you must wait for the perfect moment that your skills are high enough and you are ready and your portfolio is built, but to be honest, you will never reach that moment and you must apply in order to understand what's wrong with your portfolio and what is the stuff that you need to work on so next time you have better chances. Make systems and put deadlines, especially if you are a procrastinator like me. I hate that most people don't talk about this, but one of the hardest challenges that we face is not life challenges, it's challenges that come from ourselves. And for me, I was a big procrastinator that I couldn't keep my momentum going for a long time. But the only solution that worked for me is putting systems that were detailed enough to know what is the thing that I need to work on in every day and make sure that this thing is small enough for my mind to accept it and to continue by learning step by step. The last step is focus on yourself and compare yourself to nobody other than your past self. The competition is so high and social media is so distracting and a lot of people get to put great work. But if you focus on that and you say to yourself, well, my skills are not good enough or I'm not good as that guy, well, you are not gonna reach anywhere because everyone moves with his own pace and everyone has his own time. So don't compare your starting to someone else who has been there for a while and make sure that you only compare yourself to your past self because this is the only way that you will know if you are progressing or not. Thank you for watching this video and I hope by sharing my journey I have given you any inspiration and this video gave you any value. My name is Amr Hamid and I shall see you in the next video.